The United Steelworkers endorsed President Biden on Wednesday, adding to his list of big union supporters. He's also received endorsements from the AFL-CIO, the United Auto Workers, and the American Federation of Teachers. But he has yet to receive the endorsement of the Teamsters. It's one of the largest unions in the country, representing over a million workers in a range of industries, including UPS drivers, film workers, and law enforcement officers. Both Biden and Donald Trump have met with the Teamsters president in recent weeks. We wanted to dig deeper into the top concerns of American workers, so we interviewed policy experts to learn about the top issues for labor. First, they told us labor cares about whether candidates support raising the minimum wage, which has stagnated for 15 years. Second, a top question is how the next president thinks about using tariffs to protect American workers from having their jobs offshored. Third, would the candidates raise the corporate tax rate? which was reduced to a top rate of 21% from 35% in 2017. If corporations aren't paying their fair share, labor organizers argue the tax burden falls to workers. Fourth, how would the next president ensure that the economy we're moving towards, one powered by green energy and AI, will also be one with a lot of well-paid union jobs? And last, will the next president protect a worker's right to organize by pushing Congress to pass an act like the PRO Act, designed to protect workers from being fired for union activity. To talk through this long list, we turn to Justin Wolfers. He's a professor of public policy and economics at the University of Michigan. Thank you so much for being with us. It's a long list, Justin, but let's start with the PRO Act. Explain to people what that is and, and why it's Im important uh, and where the two candidates may fall on that. Yeah, so the history of the U.S. labor movement has been over many decades, uh, it's had less and less legal protections, more ways for employers to fight back, and that's weakened the union sector. And the PRO Act is basically an attempt to restore some of those rights to unions. And so where you as a viewer stand on the PRO Act, I think, really depends on if you're pro-union, this gives unions a greater ability to organise. And if you're anti-union, um, this protects... this is something that re reduces some of the ability for employers to fight back. In terms of the trade, we heard a lot with, with the auto strike about concerns about moving to electric vehicles and, and how they might be produced with fewer workers and there would be fewer protections for unions. How should we think, how should voters think about the movement into renewables, green energy, and what that may or may not do to the union jobs? Well, the movement towards electric cars, I think, is both inevitable and exciting, but it's also deeply threatening for some workers. Uh, one of the things is it takes fewer workers to make an electric car. That's going to worry the unions. And the other is that at the moment, most of the electric cars made in the US are made in non-unionised plants, whereas the uh, combustion engines, are, are they're the ones being made in the union plants, and that's another big reason to worry so a big part of the negotiations were trying to protect uh, the possibility of union jobs in the new electric vehicle sector. And I think that's where President Biden stands. President Trump just hates electric vehicles. Um, so it's a different way of protecting union jobs if we don't have electric vehicles. In the short run, we'll keep the union jobs. I think in the long run, the problem is electric vehicles are inevitable. And if we don't make them here... Uh, will lose union jobs to foreign workers making those electric vehicles. We talked, tariffs is on that list. Justin, uh, help us understand the balance between tariffs and the cost of goods that people tell us everywhere we turn are important to them. Yeah, it's a funny thing. Tariffs are very appealing to a lot of people, and particularly to Labor. They're also, they go by another name, taxes. And so the government would be taxing goods that you and I buy, just those goods that we buy from overseas. And it turns out that for every extra dollar we tax a Chinese good, you and I pay roughly an extra dollar more in consumer prices. And so it's not that the Chinese are paying, it's that you and I are paying. And finally, Justin, the minimum wage, why is that important to unions? Because don't they have, they have contracts with wages that deal with their jobs. Why is the minimum wage important to union workers? I mean, the, the minimum wage is important to all low-wage workers. They set a floor beneath all wages, and they pretty much lift um, wages above that as well. So if you're earning above a minimum wage, if the minimum goes up, it's likely that your wage will go up too. And it's worth noting that the minimum wage in the United States right now is seven and a quarter per hour, unbelievably low. 
so low that very few workers actually earn it. It's almost as if by doing nothing to raise the minimum wage, Congress has effectively gotten rid of it. And that's something that uh, really has, has, has led low wages, working class wages, to, to barely move in, in far too long. Justin Wolfers, Professor of Public Policy and Economics at the University of Michigan. Thank you so much.